If you're like me and haven't played Diablo 4 since its launch, you've likely heard that the devs have been working hard to address community feedback and improve the game, from quality of life to progression, as well as providing interesting new experiences with seasons. Now, as an MMO player and a fairly average ARPG enjoyer, I've actually never really gotten into seasons in any ARPG. I'd always just play Eternal. From my point of view, I didn't like the idea of making temporary progress, which was definitely down to my MMO player brain being obsessed with some kind of idea of permanent progression. In this video, that will change as I'll be playing through the entirety of Diablo 4's Season 2. I'll beat every boss in the game, check out all of the new content, get to level 100, and talk about the positive changes since launch, as well as provide feedback for things I'd like to see improved for Season 3. This video is sponsored by Blizzard, but they've given me full creative control to critique the game like with any normal video. So before we jump into my experience, a quick overview for Season 2. This season is vampire themed. There's a new storyline and season specific MSQ which lasts until around level 40. There's a new progression system in the form of blood pact and vampire powers, which adds an additional layer of power on top of your standard class kit. You level up these vampire powers by collecting potent blood. At all times, there's one zone on the map that's in a state of blood harvest. Basically go there, slaughter everything, summon bosses, use keys to open treasure and collect blood to upgrade your vampire skills. There's five new summonable bosses ranging from level 60 to 100 added to the game. You can collect resources from various activities to summon these bosses and each one has their own loot table so you can target farm uniques. Two new paragon glyphs per class, six new unique items, seven new legendary powers and general quality of life changes. With all that said, let's jump into my journey with D4 Season 2. Starting out, create a character, and I decided to go with a rogue. I make her look like a middle-aged woman trying to relive her youth as a My Chemical Romance fan, click skip campaign and name her Buffy because we're going to be slaying vampires. Extremely creepy cutscene plays, setting the tone for the seasonal story, and we're in the game. Spawning in Ked Bardu, which is the base from which the seasonal MSQ takes place. Do the first part of the seasonal MSQ and unlock our vampire powers. Please give me another chance. No. Wait, can we say- I could have saved him, the game just didn't allow me to. Continue further and we meet Vampire Lord Zir, the bad guy who controls all the vampires. He tries to control us, but we have special blood, so we can benefit from vampire powers but resist Zir's will. Next, to continue with the MSQ, I need to complete Chapter 1 of the Season Journey. So press the U key bind, click Season Journey, and we've got a list of tasks to complete. This structure continues until the end of the MSQ around level 40. Basically, do Season MSQ quest, complete Season Journey chapter, do another Season quest, complete another Journey chapter, and repeat. Thanks to the vampire powers, the early game levelling felt a lot more fun. I specifically loved a vampire power called Hemomancy, which dealt massive AoE damage to everything on screen every 4 seconds. This allowed me to just run through the blood harvest zone, going from pack to pack, clearing mobs very quickly. These vampire powers are really strong. I got one, one of them's just deleting everything in the area. <laughs> so good. This time around, I was also enjoying the gameplay of Diablo 4 much more as a rogue compared to at launch with my sorcerer. I decided to play Flurry Rogue, and I loved that I was able to spam abilities, blow up packs of mobs, and constantly keep moving forward. This class also has some nice synergies with the vampire powers, as I'd find out later on, so if you're unsure on what class to play for Season 2, then I'd definitely recommend Flurry Rogue when it comes to speed, fun, and ease of play style. For some reason, I decided to level up on World Tier 2 this time around, but at level 34 I switched to World Tier 1, and the leveling felt both faster and more fun. So the meta of World Tier 1 to level 45, then straight to World Tier 3, is still likely the best approach in Season 2. After completing Season Journey Chapter 3, I unlocked the final part of the Seasonal MSQ where we take on Lord Zir. Here he is descends into the pool of blood and transforms into a giga vampire demon. That's pretty cool to be fair. Yeah, that's a really cool looking boss. Visually, this fight was pretty cool and later on you can summon a level 80 version of this boss to target farm uniques. Zir is dead. Is that the end of the MSQ or is there more? 
Next we're going to progress through these chapters, make it to early late game, and hopefully become super OP on my rogue. At level 43 I did the capstone dungeon to unlock world tier 3, which in hindsight was maybe a few levels too early. Dodge, dodge, dodge. Failed at dodging that one, but okay. We got this, no problem. He's almost down. Was there a mechanic that I wasn't aware of what happened there? There it is. And from there I basically just did a solid mix of content to level up. Farming blood harvests combined with tree of whispers, legion events, hell tide for crafting mats, world bosses, nightmare dungeons, and progressing through the seasonal hunter's acclaim board to unlock the final vampire power, a cursed touch. Are we actually strong enough to do world tier 3 at level 43? Yeah, I think I'm a little bit too weak. My health is up and down like a yo-yo. Ah, we might be alright if we just persist with it a little bit. 45. Brilliant, I can find my sacred gear. At level 47, I unlocked a cursed touch from the Hunter's Acclaim board, which basically unleashed a massive explosion of damage from built up souls whenever I used my dash skill. We've got a big boy pop out. Shadow Step's such a good ability. Yeah, this is. Oi! <laughs> Took zero damage all fight, and then I just get one tapped. Something I haven't done yet is fill all three of these. I think it summons like a big boss. My absolute favorite thing about the seasonal blood harvest zones is that in the center of them, players can deposit a total of 150 blood lures into pedestals to summon waves upon waves of monsters, elites, and bosses, resulting in the entire screen being filled with loot. A few times it's happened where we're doing multiple lures back to back, and there's just so much loot that my bags are completely full. This is also insanely good XP with a high drop rate for uniques, so not only is this fun, but incredibly rewarding. Thanks to the Bloodlers, by the time I was level 50, I already had two of the uniques I needed for my build, which had me feeling very powerful for the next few levels. Yo, this weapon and these gloves were actually required in my endgame build and I've got them already. That's insane luck, and I've only just dinged 50. This build is insanely fun to play at this point, and there's still so many things I can do to further optimize it. It's gonna be absolutely mental if this build is like fully realized with all the vampire skills. Absolutely can't wait. Oh yes, we can finally max out Hemomancy. What's that gonna do to me? Another 20% damage. Oh, my basic attacks like reset the cooldown on my evade. So I can constantly just... Oh my god, that mobility! That's insane! Wow, I, sh I should have switched to the endgame vampire powers much sooner. Season 2 certainly succeeds in feeling like a completely different experience compared to the launch of Diablo 4, which is really what I was looking for. It doesn't feel like I'm playing the same game as I was at launch, which is basically what I wanted, and it's what I always want if I return to an ARPG during a season. After experiencing these vampire powers, it would be extremely difficult to go back and play on the Eternal Realm after this. It's like you've got access to a whole new toolkit, which changes your build and is just more fun. It's like an added layer of fun on top of the previous gameplay. Oh, yes, big damage. The whole screen's just absolutely filled with explosions. <laughs> What is going on? Oh, that's a lot of mobs we're gonna have here. Oh, yes. Give me that loot. For me, this is the most fun thing about these blood harvests. When everyone comes together once all of these have been activated and you've summoned all the mobs. And it's just a big loot pinata event, essentially. Screen's just full of explosions. Loot's dropping everywhere. It's just a lot of fun. Super rewarding as well. Legendaries dropping everywhere. Absolutely love it. Very quickly run out of inventory space though. At level 60, I realized I had a bunch of summoning items in my consumable tabs for the new bosses you can summon for targeted unique farming. So I went beneath the Tree of Whispers and took on Varshan. So we go to the Malignant Altar. Varshan, level 55, so lower level than me. Lots of stuff to dodge. Dodge. Great dodging. I'm surprised he's only level 55, considering I'm level 60. Now he's stunned, nuke him down. Right, anything good? Oh, we got a unique! Nice! Is this good? Yeah, I beat Varshan quite easily due to being 5 levels higher and the World Tier 3 version being really easy. But in World Tier 4, this boss is a bit harder with him being level 75 and dealing much more damage. 
One thing to note about these summoned bosses is that the levels are static, so you can just out-level and out-gear the lower level ones. From level 60 to 69 I just spammed Nightmare Dungeons to level up my glyphs, as well as do Helltides whenever they were up. Oh, can we kill the Butcher? Are we strong enough? Big damage? Okay, is it half health? First time I've ran into the Butcher since playing. We've got him, no problem. There it is, anything good? P on one, Butcher zero. Level 69, nice. Next, it was time for the Capstone Dungeon to unlock World Tier 4. Ooh, what was that? I just got clapped. Oh yeah, we're nuking him down very quick. Ooh, okay, okay. Respect the boss, respect it. There it is. World Tier 4 unlocked. 200% increased XP. Now we're gonna level up even faster. At level 71, I tried to fight the world tier four version of Varshan. In hindsight, I took him on a bit early though, and he absolutely wrecked me, and ensured that I'd actually need to deal with his mechanics this time around, rather than just nuke him down like in the world tier three version. I'm not ready yet. Yeah, I can't do that. That's, that's a massive increase in difficulty. Back to farming, I got some nice upgrades and started to reach the point of peak fun at around level 75 where my build was fully online. I'm deleting packs of mobs, progression is feeling good and I've got multiple goals to work towards. Oh my God, there's like so much going on on screen that the game is struggling to handle it. Pop the shrine, 100% crit. Just go through the map and just absolutely decimate everything. One shot every- oh my god, it's so fun. I love those bloody crit shrines. They're my absolute favourite. Just blinking around. It looks like I'm speed hacking. But no, I can actually just teleport around so much. <laughs> oh, that was good fun. Oh, I just- okay, I'm starting to get to the point of peak fun. My build isn't even fully online yet. Big damage. Oh, yes. We are so strong now. Feeling powerful, it was time to take on another summoned boss, Gregory the Galvanic Saint, which was summoned via 5 living steel that you collect from Helltide 300 Cinder's chest at 3 per chest. So this is another new boss, Gregor. Maybe I need to like, just be dodging him more? I mean, we're doing okay. What's, what's going on here? Now we're pumping damage. Okay, this might actually be doable. It's a good challenge though. So I'm just winging it to be honest. It's a really cool boss. This Probably one of the coolest bosses I've seen in the game. So I'm gonna run out of healing pots. Oh, there's one over here. He's disappeared. Oh, he's stunned. Bit of damage. Spout some more healing pots. This is a cool boss. I'm impressed. First attempt. I'm just gonna miss it. I think I just, just lack the healing. Only just. Panicking. Panicking. Big damage. Do we get him? Oh my god, we got him. We just about got him. And we got some unique gloves. Please be the gloves I need. Wow, what an awesome boss that was. Really cool. What do we get? Oh, we got the one I needed. Oh, it's got everything we wanted. Perfect. That feels good. That was a cool boss fight. I'm surprised I got him on my first attempt. For, like, for half of the fight, I went into it thinking, yeah, I can't do this. I'm not doing enough damage. And I didn't really believe in myself. But... Yeah, we got there. I feel like potions and sigils should have their own separate inventory because this inventory here, the consumables tab, is constantly full. At level 81, I collected a few malignant hearts from the Tree of Whispers events and decided to give World Tier 4 Varshan another try. Come on, Craig, focus. Okay, dodge. 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 Good. Now he's just going to do this licky thing. Just keep running behind him. We're learning. Oh, he does this pattern. Oh, that's cool. Let's kill the ads. Pizza pattern. We're doing it. There it is. Anything good? We got the unique dagger. Oh, this one's way higher item level. Better stats. Yeah, it's just straight up better. Massive, massive upgrade. So these two summoning items, Shard of Agony and Mucus Slick Egg, are used down here to the south to summon at level 100 monsters, which is a lot higher level than me and probably beyond the scope of this video as I think my editor is probably sorting through about 30 hours worth of footage. 
I'll likely play a little bit more off camera and work towards level 100, but for the sake of my editor's sanity, let's wrap it up here. Yeah, let's not. I continued playing and spammed nightmare dungeons until I had all my glyphs to level 15, continued gathering boss summon mats from various different types of content, and at level 95 I realised there were two more summoned bosses that I didn't check out yet. One being the Beast in the Ice, which is level 85, and the other being Lord Zir, who we fought at the end of the seasonal MS. Q. Both of these boss fights I thought were really cool, decently well telegraphed attacks and farming the items required to summon them really helped improve the entire gameplay experience from 60 onwards in terms of fun goals on the way to level 100. Eventually I dinged level 100 and it was time to take on the two endgame bosses, the first being the new summonable level 100 Duriel Maggot boss and the final boss being Uber Lilith. I tried taking on Duriel with my standard build, I had a decent first attempt but decided to switch things up to nuke him down quicker as I personally hate dealing with poison damage. I switched to a bit of a scuffed rapid fire build and took him down without too many issues. Now what most people actually do is farm Uber Duriel in groups and take turns using the summoning mats for more attempts to increase the chances of getting an Uber unique drop, which are apparently dropping at quite a reasonable rate compared to a launch where uber uniques were so rare that you'd just never see one. Next I set my sights on uber Lilith and I have to say that this boss was the most disappointing and unfun experience out of my entire time playing season 2. I actually think it's the worst designed boss fight in the entire game. Why? Well, unlike every other boss where the game gives you the opportunity to learn the mechanics, every single mechanic on Uber Lilith one-shots you, which is fine if the abilities are telegraphed well, but they're not. The most difficult part of the Uber Lilith fight is actually seeing where to stand and recognising when the lingering one-shot floor AoE is safe to move into. All of the mechanics are red, there's so much going on in such a small area, it's just a mess compared to every other boss fight in the game. I'm no stranger to difficulty in video games, I've beat the Souls games multiple times and I usually enjoy the process of dying over and over, slowly getting better each time to eventually beat a boss. But with Uber Lilith that didn't happen. I ran at this boss and died to the same visually unclear mechanic for about an hour until I said to myself, screw this, we're just gonna cheese it. So I looked up a Twisted Blades boss nuke poison build and nuked her down so fast that half of her mechanic were completely bypassed. So now I've completed all the content, let's wrap up this video with my thoughts on Diablo 4 Season 2. Things I liked. The overall theme of this season along with the Vampire Powers and Blood Harvest zones were very fun. It felt like an entirely new experience compared to the game's launch. The new summonable bosses made the whole leveling experience from 60 to 100 much better by giving the player goals to work towards as well as taking away some RNG when it comes to target farming uniques. Gem storage, good. Storage search filters, good. Increased mob density, good. Not having to refarm Renown in Season 2, good. Improvements to the horse gameplay, very good. It's extremely fast now. Season Pass. Fun fact, this is the first Season Pass I've ever fully finished in any game ever. You fully complete it around level 83 to 85 just by playing the game. I appreciate that I didn't have to go out of my way to do any tedious tasks to finish it. The early game felt good with the seasonal MSQ and vampire powers improving the early combat feel, uber uniques having a more realistic drop rate, good, and one massive change that I absolutely loved was the improvements to the level design of dungeons. Previously I felt that there was so much backtracking in dungeons that back at launch I genuinely disliked running dungeons in Diablo 4. Now though there's much less backtracking so I actually enjoyed dungeons this time. Things I'd like to see improved for Season 3. The number one thing I want added to Diablo 4 is a loot filter. Apparently this is in the works, but in Season 2 there were times during the Blood Harvest where there's just so much loot on the floor that I just couldn't be bothered to loot it. And in fact, seeing so much loot during the Mass Blood Lure Chains started to stress me out knowing I've got to pick it up and sort through it. Please Blizzard, let us use the mount sprint inside of towns. Using the mount in the world feels great, except for when you're in town. 
increase the murmuring orbs cap and allow us to spend more orbs per roll for a chance at better gear. I was acquiring murmuring orbs so quick that I gave up spending them and just left it capped out which didn't feel good. Please give us a separate inventory for potion consumables, as currently the consumables tab is filled with sigils, summoning mats and potions, which becomes annoying to deal with and I was constantly running out of space in the consumables tab. There's still not enough storage space in the game, by the time I hit level 100 my 250 slots of storage were completely filled with aspects. Either give us separate aspect storage or have us upgrade the aspects on the codex to free up space. Improve Uber Lilith either by getting rid of the one shot mechanics or displaying her mechanics more clearly. Allow me to easily chain run multiple nightmare dungeons in a row without having to leave the dungeon, click on the sigil, then find the next dungeon on my map. I want to be able to instantly go from dungeon to dungeon in one or two clicks. Personally, I think there's far too many niche conditional stats in the game, such as X damage to stunned, chilled, slowed, dazed, X damage to trap skills and so on. I'd like to see some of these stats just removed from the game, and add loadouts to the game for gear and paragon so I can quickly switch between builds depending on the content. Overall, I had way more fun with Diablo 4 Season 2 than I did back at the launch of the game. Playing through this season has converted me from an Eternal Realm ARPG enjoyer to a Seasonal Realm enjoyer. I actually had so much more fun with Seasonal compared to Eternal that I can't see myself ever playing Eternal again. Season 2 brought a lot of great changes to the game and my feedback for things to improve for Season 3 is for the most part more quality of life stuff. If you're like me and haven't played Diablo 4 since the launch, or you have MMO player brain and don't see the appeal of playing Seasonal, then I highly suggest you give Season 2 a try. It genuinely feels like a fresh experience, and it seems like Diablo 4 is improving with every major update. But that's it for this video, as always let me know your thoughts on Diablo 4 Season 2 in the comments below, and let me know if you also had a similar mindset that I used to have about playing Seasonal vs Eternal. Social media on screen, help us out with a like to appease the algorithm gods, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.